Hey y'all, sorry I couldn't be with y'all this week. Like I said, we're doing a Facebook Live with our church here in Chiquimula this afternoon. So um, I wanted to make this video to say hey <laughs> and to uh, talk a little bit about Psalm 15. I'm going to read that. So if you want to get your Bibles, um, this psalm talks about the importance of having integrity. So I'll just start reading uh, Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person, who honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts, and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without increase, and who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. So the first question here is, what is integrity? So I looked it up, and integrity, integrity has two definitions. The first is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, or to be honorable. Also, um, integrity can mean um, the state of being whole or undivided. Like I said, I feel like this is a good, um, a good subject to talk about right now because you don't have to look very far to find people that, um, that aren't honest or that don't want unity, you know. So with all that around us, it's hard to stay focused on what's right. So, um, Talking about this is important right now. Um, it doesn't mean just because the world's acting crazy doesn't mean we have to because it doesn't benefit us. It doesn't benefit our, our family or those around us. Um, this psalm is filled with ways we can get closer to God, too, no matter what we're going through, no matter our circumstances. Because the truth is, guys, with weakened integrity, when we're not honest, when we don't do what's right, it, it's like erosion. Erosion starts, you know, um, w when it rains a lot. Here it happens all the time because there's a lot of, like, mountains. Um, the land starts eroding, and it rains and rains, and the land just washes away. It destroys crops. It destroys roads. It causes a lot of problems. The same is true with weakened integrity. When we do not um, hold integrity to be, like, something valuable to us, it will damage our lives, and it can also damage uh, other people's lives. So, in this psalm, there's uh, three parts. The first part, the very first verse, asks a question. David, again, asks a question. He says, who can live in your tent or who can dwell on your holy mountain? Tent and holy mountain represent God's presence. Um, for example, when Moses went up onto the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, it says that when he went up there, like this cloud completely covered him. No one could see him, what was going on. He was there for a long time, and God gave him the Ten Commandments. Actually, when he came back down from the Holy Mountain, it says that his face like was glowing, and the people were scared of him. <laughs> you know, and so David is actually asking the question, you know, what type of person can enter your presence, God, and enjoy a relationship with you? Who can have that intimate, personal, face-to-face -face relationship with you? We're not talking about salvation today. You know, I'm not talking about what Jesus did. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he made it possible for us to be saved. You know, if we ask forgiveness and we we ask him into our hearts like we were told as, our, as kids, you know. I'm not talking about that. You know, salvation only comes from God. He's the only one that can do it. He cleanses us. He purifies us. What we're talking about today is how can we better our relationship with God? Do you feel close to God? You know, and why or why not? Um, don't miss this. You know, Moses was on the mountain. The disciples sat at the table with Jesus. They were like his best friends. You know, like they had a relationship. 
with God, with Jesus. And Jesus, God invites us to have that relationship. There are things in our life that sometimes hurts our relationship with God. And that's what David's talking about in this psalm. Um, in Ephesians 3.12, it says that through faith in Jesus, we can approach God. We can go into God's presence like Moses did, you know, like the disciples sat with Jesus, you know. We can go into God's presence with freedom. We can go boldly like we would um, barge into our parents' house. Even though I'm 36 years old, I don't knock when I go to my parents' house. You know, I just go in. Why? Because I feel freedom. I, I know they love me. They're not going to be like, hey, you know, what are you doing here? They're going to accept me. I'm going to go in there. The same is true. Because of Jesus, God invites us to have that relationship with him, to go in to his presence when we want to. But to have a personal relationship with God, one where, um, one where, I'm talking to him. He's talking to me. You know, it it requires some things in me, right? Um, now, if you're saying to yourself, <laughs> I can't do that. I can't talk to God like that. You know, me and God, we, we aren't like that. You know, first of all, you know, you might be believing a lie. <laughs> you might be believing that you're not good enough or no, you don't know my past. That's a lie. You know, that's from the enemy. That's not true. Uh, like I just read in Ephesians, God invites us to have that relationship with him. If you're not believing a lie, there may be things in your life that's holding you back from having a relationship with God. Um, maybe there's something, something you're doing, something you're believing that's holding you back. So that's what we're going to talk about today. In verses 2 through 5, David um, gives us like the answer, writes down what God says to his question. He said, who can be in your presence, God? You know, so David answers and he lists several characteristics of a person that can be in God's presence. So the first characteristic is the person that does what's right. <laughs> you know, that's pretty obvious. Uh, the person that that does what's right, um, what that does justly, that, that loves to do the right thing. Um, it makes sense because if we think about it, God is perfect. Uh, God does what's right all the time, you know, so if I want a relationship with someone like that, you know, my desire should be to do what's right too. Again, I'm not talking about salvation. You can do nothing to earn your salvation, but, um, things that I do, mistakes that I make, or, um, things that I literally choose to do that's wrong affects my relationship with God. Here's an example. I'm married, been married for almost 16 years. Uh, if I, have an affair, you know, uh, even if my husband doesn't even know about it, if I go out and I cheat on my husband, you know, it's going to affect our relationship, you know, whether he knows or not, it's going to affect how I talk to him and how I, how I act around him. So it's the same kind of thought with God. Whenever we do something that we are not supposed to do or um, that we know is not right, it does affect our relationship with God. Like I said, doesn't mean that I lose my salvation, you know, if I if I do something wrong, but it does affect how my relationship with God. Um, the next thing that David says is uh, the person that can be in God's presence is an honest person. And here he's actually talking about, you know, someone that's honest in their heart, that that's like an honest person, not just someone who tells the truth when they need to No, an honest person that comes from the heart. And, it, uh, you know, we think about honesty. We want to be uh, truthful. That is the person that can have um, that personal relationship with God that when I, when I say personal, again, I mean that relationship where I feel comfortable with him. You know, I'm just, I enjoy my time with him. Um, uh, this particular answer, again, is talking about uh, how uh, we think, too. The Hebrew word that's used here is about, you know, the heart. So I'm an honest person in my mind, in my heart, and my mouth. Okay. Uh, also, the person who doesn't slander someone is uh, that person that can have that special relationship with God. Slander. What does it mean? I looked it up <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> it's to make a statement that's not true about somebody in order to hurt their reputation. And honestly, guys, um, 
that's basically that defines Facebook right now, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, everybody um, is trying to hurt each other, put one person down to lift another one up, uh, put a group of people down and, and slander them to make sure that another another side is is raised you know that's not uh what uh the the will of god is you know uh, we're slandering each other we're tearing each other apart are uh, a lot of times i feel like um we make decisions just to hurt somebody else's reputation or to make ourselves look better you know and that's not what god desires for us here uh the book i'm reading about the psalms yeah, uh, he gives four ways or four tips on how we can know whether we need to say something about somebody or not. So the very first tip is, is it a secret? Is it confidential? If it is, then don't tell it. Um, is it true? And you probably need to do some research more than just sharing a Facebook uh, video. You know, uh, we got to make sure it's true. Is it necessary to say? Is it positively necessary? Is it going to benefit somebody? And is it kind? And um, I feel like if we would just go through those filters, many times we wouldn't hurt our relationship with other people and therefore hurt our relationship with God. Um, we got to watch the way we talk <laughs> to each other, uh, around our kids. You know, we got to watch our tongues. Um, David... <laughs> David continues, um, he, he, who enjoys fellowship with God, you know, uh, notice that everything we've already talked about, uh, is basically about our relationship with other people. So that's, that's a, an idea we need to remember who, um, the person that doesn't wrong their neighbor and who's my neighbor is just the person that's I'm around, you know, my family, people I work with. And now because of social media, um, literally everybody in the world. <laughs> I mean, everyone can see what we're posting, what we're saying, you know, these are our neighbors. Uh, don't do them wrong. You know, look for a healthy relationship with your, your neighbor, with the people that you're around. Also, uh, the person that hangs out with other people that are doing right, you know, um, my relationship with others can either help or hurt my relationship with God. It's the truth. Uh, I'm not saying that um, because I've decided to have a good relationship with God means that I'm better than other people. That's not what I'm saying at all. And it's not the truth, you know, but if I'm, for example, trying to stop uh, cussing, you know, but I'm around people that cuss all the time, you know, our minds, uh, I know I learn from other people. I repeat how, uh, what I hear. That's how I learned Spanish, you know, by listening. And I just started repeating. Sometimes I didn't know what I was saying, but, and that's what happens. You know, um, also music that we listen to, uh, movies that we, what we watch, a lot of times it affects us. We may not say it does. We may not really realize it, but it does. Um, if you're trying to get something out of your life, you might want to look around and see who is around you and who you're hanging out with the most or what you're watching, what you're listening to the most, because it does affect us. You know, uh, if you're trying to get closer to God, then then literally go places that will get you closer to God. <laughs> that they talk about God, that they talk about good things. If you're trying to uh, have a spirit of unity in your life don't go places that are constantly talking about division you know don't follow pages on facebook that are constantly talking about division and we want to seek these things that are going to draw us closer to god because he has the best for us um final three things real quick um the person that has, uh, you know, that relationship with God, that special relationship with God, um, they keep their word even when it hurts. You know, that's in verse um, four. When it hurts to do something, 
it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. You know, sometimes the right thing is hard to do. Um, but the person that, that keeps promises, even though it's hard, you know, that's, that's a person with integrity. Um, generous, if we're generous with others, we literally, um, live off the, generosity of other people it, it completely blows me away that people that I've never even met um, will see something that we're doing and say hey I want to be a part of what you're doing in Guatemala you know and and they'll donate and you know what I'm saying that it, it's amazing how be, when I give when I'm generous how it benefits me too you know um, being here in Guatemala um, right now we're giving food that is our main goal as our ministry right now is giving food to people that don't have it. And, and, and just to see how appreciative they are, it benefits me too. So when you're generous, don't think, uh, do they deserve it? You know, or uh, why are they in this situation? You know, be generous in God and God sees your heart. God knows that and he blesses us. Um, and then the last one is just somebody that doesn't take bribes. Um, maybe you don't take bribes, but I got to thinking, you know, basically we could put like favoritism in this one, because if I show favoritism to somebody and it benefits me, like, like a bribe, you know, when I receive bribes from some, somebody else, you know, it, it's benefiting me. It's the same thing with favoritism. If I show favoritism to someone to, uh, for my own benefit, that is, um, something that hurts my relationship with God. So, um, these are just some things that David mentions, and I hope I'm not babbling or boring you, but notice guys. Every single one of these are tips to help our relationship with God, and they all have to do with our relationship with people, how we treat other people. Why is that? You know, um, I thought about, uh, and in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus uh, is talking to his disciples and, or maybe it was Pharisees, I don't know. Anyway, somebody asked him, you know, what is the greatest commandment? And I'm sure y'all know this, uh, but Jesus, uh, it's actually in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, verses 37 to 39. Jesus says, the two greatest commandments, the first is love God with all your mind, with all your heart, with everything you are, with your whole soul. And the second is love people, love other people and love them like you would love your own self. Take care of them like you take care of yourself, you know, and and I feel like what we're talking about uh, here, it really um, makes sense. If I ha if I can't get along with people that I can see with my own eyes, if I can't get along with my family members, if I can't get along with people at work, then I cannot be surprised when my relationship with God is damaged or when I don't feel comfortable praying or if I don't feel, um, feel worthy, you know, when my relationship with other people is damaged, when I'm lying or I'm cheating people, you know, if I'm being tacky, you know, yelling too much, you know, it really does. It affects our relationship with God. Um, the problems that maybe we're having uh, with God may, may have to do with some of the ways that we're treating other people and treating each other. Again, I want to repeat this before I end. Um, salvation, you know, being able to get in heaven, a clean heart, you know, Jesus did that when he died on the cross. And he, um, we don't have to do anything else except say, look, I'm not perfect. Forgive me. You know, I, I say, you're my savior, Jesus. And, and he cleans us. Something spiritual happens to where we are purified. But to have um, that relationship with God where I can literally enjoy God's presence and go in there and and he uh, feels me and I feel comfortable and we're you know we're talking and having a good relationship that that we have to do some stuff you know we gotta make decisions uh, and and then God gives us the strength to continue to do it and he continues purifying us um uh, it ends in verse 5, the, the psalm ends in verse 5 with a promise. 
everyone that does these things, basically that lives a life full of integrity, they will not be shaken. And basically the word shaken means they'll be secure. You know, they'll have a safe life, one that one that is sure and secure and, and one that's not constantly like up and down. And it's like peace. You know, they won't be shaken no matter what they go through, uh, no matter um, their circumstance, no matter what's going on, no matter if the whole world gets uh, this virus or, oh, gosh, all this stuff going on with protests and, and, and things, you know, no matter what's going on in our cities, um, if we focus on the life that God has for us, you know, <laughs> y'all, we won't be shaken. And it's something that God does. And it's awesome. So I uh, hope that uh, you understood what I, what I mean by this psalm. You know, God doesn't want us to be perfect, but he does want us to realize that our actions have consequences. They have good consequences or bad ones, you know. And when we, when our desire is to seek that integrity to seek honesty and, and righteousness, you know, God, God sees that and he blesses us. And so I hope that, uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, I can't wait to see y'all next week. God bless y'all. I'm going to pray and then we'll end. God, thank you for everyone that's watching this. I just pray Lord that you bless them and that you draw them closer to you. I pray Lord that they can hear hear what you are wanting them to say. Lord, speak to them, speak to their heart, hearts, touch them. Thank you, God, that you invite us not only to uh, go to heaven and be with you one day when we die. God, you actually invite us to have a relationship with you right now, uh, today. And God, I just pray, Lord, that we will accept your invitation. Uh, thank you, God, so much for your love. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, y'all.